If we told you that there's some unique stuff in Russia, you would probably say, well, of course, but you likely have no idea how unusual some of these things are, and not just Moscow's famed cat circus. Here are some of the strangest things you can find in the frozen tundra that we call Russia. In the United States, some parts of Europe, and even Japan, for the small price of roughly one month's salary, you can take your kids to a magical fantasy land full of princesses and pirates. Disneyland and Disney World are those ultimate childhood destinations, where kids can come as close to real magic as possible. Russian kids can have a similarly magical experience at a place called Patriot Park, except there are no princesses or pirates at this freakishly disturbing military Disneyland. Instead, at Patriot Park, kids get to see real Russian tanks and play with grenade launchers, which is surely a skill that every parent hopes their child will one day possess. Patriot Park has been described as basically Vladimir Putin's very expensive early indoctrination program for Russian school children. Get them fascinated by weapons of war at a young age, and they'll grow up to be okay with blowing stuff up in the name of Russian military glory. In a way, it's genius, and cheaper than Disneyland, as you can buy a ticket for roughly 120 at the price of a one-day ticket to the Magic Kingdom. As an adult, I'm horrified, but as a former child, I'm incredibly jealous <laughs> that theme parks now exist where you can play with grenade launchers. Most of the world's mummies are anonymous dead people, and they're typically in various states of decomposition. But Russia has a rather unusual mummy, and you probably even know his name. After Russian revolutionary Vladimir Lenin died in 1924, instead of being buried, he was embalmed and put on display at a mausoleum. What's really remarkable is that he still looks pretty lifelike, though a little waxy. It's almost as if he's just sleeping, and at any moment he's going to wake up and say, let's get back to this business of running the Soviet Union. It costs Russia roughly $200,000 a year to keep Lenin looking fresh. It's such a huge enterprise that there's a biomedical lab in Moscow that's dedicated to coming up with cutting-edge preservation techniques just for Lenin. He has to be re-embalmed every two years, and sometimes his eyelashes have to be swapped out. And you can see the end result of all this for yourself, as he's on display four days a week. Vladimir Lenin ended up the closest thing communism had to a god. When you think Russia, you don't usually think Buddhism, but after you're done visiting the beautifully preserved corpse of Vladimir Lenin, you can visit the somewhat less beautifully preserved corpse of Lama Dasha Dorja Itigalov, a Buddhist monk who died in 1927. Shortly before his death, Itigalov instructed his followers to dig him up in 30 years, which they dutifully did. He died in the lotus position and was buried that way, and when exhumed, his body was in a remarkable state of preservation. But by then the Soviets were in power, so they had to bury him again. When Itigalov was exhumed a second time, 75 years after his death, he was still remarkably well preserved. It was considered a miracle, and eventually the corpse ended up being behind glass in a Buddhist monastery. But that's not the end of the story, as some people think Itigalov isn't really dead, just in a very deep meditative state. To prove it, they've got security photos they claim show him wandering around the monastery late at night. For some reason, the monks don't seem to think that's as terrifying as other people do. In Russia, propagation is considered patriotic. Not only are employees entitled to state-funded parental leave, but there's also a regional holiday in the city of Ulyanovsk, in which everyone gets time off so they can make babies. And it's not just a day off, it's also a competition with prizes. The day of conception is celebrated on September 12th. Anyone who gives birth nine months later, on June 12th, is eligible for money, cars, refrigerators, and other prizes in celebration of the day they had a romp in the sack. Why would the government want to get involved in its citizens' procreation? After the fall of the Soviet Union, Russia experienced a population decline. In fact, the first day of conception was established because the country was officially one of the most sparsely populated nations in the world. Evidently, officials believe they can't count on a bare-chested horse-riding Vladimir Putin to get couples in the mood as well as a free refrigerator can. Medical history is full of glorious breakthroughs, and it seems reasonable enough to hold monuments to some of them. With that in mind, it turns out that Russia has a monument to animas. In June 2008, a Russian health spa unveiled this fabulously freakish work of art, which features three adorable cherubs teaming up to carry a certain type of medical bag on their backs. Evidently, the design was inspired by the 15th century Renaissance painting Venus and Mars by Sandro Botticelli which depicts cherubs stealing a weapon from the god of war. We're sure Botticelli would have nodded his approval. At the unveiling, one of the doctors at the spa said, 
We administer enemas nearly every day, so I thought, why not use our sense of humor and give it a monument? The monument is made from bronze, is about 5 feet tall, and weighs 770 pounds. The whole weird thing makes a bizarre kind of sense, as this spa is in a region known for its mineral springs and spas. So if there really needs to be a monument to enemas, this is the place for it. Someone has to know about it. We have the most enemas in the world done here. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more grunge videos about your favorite stuff are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.